Hello viewers, this is Dao Fast here. I am very excited to show you this brand new car dash camera from the company Autovox. This is the X1 model and it's a rear view mirror car dash camera. The cool thing about this dash cam is the entire mirror is a LCD touch screen. Being such a large screen, you can actually use the entire LCD as your rear view mirror. This kit also comes with a rear camera that you can install on the back of your vehicle. So it's able to record activities in front of the vehicle and also behind the vehicle. Now in this video that you're watching, I will be doing a full review of this dash cam, show you what comes with the kit and also how to operate the unit. Then I'll make a second video showing you how to install this dash cam into a vehicle. So let's get started. So let's unbox this. Here's a user manual. And this is the rear view mirror car dash camera. Microfiber cloth, straps for mounting the mirror, GPS antenna, AV cable to connect the rear camera. Here's the rear camera itself. Additional straps, power cable. Here's a look at everything you get with this car dash camera. Let me go over some of the features on this unit. The front camera records in 1296p full HD. The rear camera records in 720p HD. The unit features wide dynamic range, lane departure warning system, an external GPS antenna for tracking speed, direction, and route during your journey. This unit has an auto adjust rear view angle. It can switch between parking view and regular driving view when you're using it as a rear view mirror. It also features super night vision for crystal clear video recording during the nighttime. So let's have a closer look at this rear view mirror dash cam. On the front, we have this very large 9.88 inch color LCD touchscreen. At the bottom, we have the power switch. At the top, on the left side here is the AV input for the backup camera. Next to it is a GPS input. Over here is the micro SD memory card slot. Right above that is a reset button. On the right side is a mini USB port for powering the unit and also data transfer. Looking at the back, on the right side is the front-facing camera. You can adjust the angle of the camera by swiveling it. Also, another very nice feature about this camera is you can actually slide this out, and that will allow you to properly fit this over any factory mirror. This is a great feature that I've not seen on other rear-view mirror dash cam. Right below here is the microphone. On the left side is a speaker. In the middle, we have these top and bottom hooks for you to install the rubber straps to strap this over your existing factory mirror. There are two sets of straps that come with this unit. On the right side, this one says normal. On the left side, this one tells you that it can stretch 50% more for larger mirrors. To install these straps, what you want to do is place one end into the hook right here, wrap this over your existing factory mirror, and then place the other end in the bottom hook right here, and repeat the same thing for the other side. Let's first install the memory card. First, we'll connect this power cable with a mini USB connector. Next, we'll connect the GPS antenna. The last connection on this unit is the AV cable that connects the rear camera. Now, just a word of caution, do not mix the power cable and the AV cable. They both use the mini USB connector. On the AV cable, there's a red wire you need to connect to the backup light so the dash cam will know when you have the car in reverse. Connect the rear camera to the other end of the AV cable. I do want to point out the enclosure you see here for the rear camera is all metal, very solid, including the bracket, it's also all metal. This camera is also IP68 rated, so it's waterproof and dustproof. Before I power this on, I'll remove this plastic film on the front. Once the unit is powered on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the flashing red dot at the top left hand corner. At the bottom left hand corner is a compass. That information is coming from the GPS antenna. On the right side, we have the time and date. Now if you touch anywhere on the screen, these function buttons at the bottom will show up. If you press the record button, it'll stop the recording. Now you can select the setup. The first menu item is storage space. Here you can format the SD card.
Next item down, LDWS. This is Lane Departure Warning System. You can turn this on or off. Next one here is Speed. You can select miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Driving Mode. You can turn this on or off. Day and Time. Here you can set the day and time of the dash cam. Resolution. Default is 1296p. You can also set this for 1080p. Loop recording, default is 1 minute. You can set it for 2 minutes or 3 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and set this for 3 minutes. G sensor is low, off, or high. With the G sensor, if it detects an impact to the vehicle while you're driving, it will lock that video clip so it will not be overwritten. Parking mode sensitivity, you can set this for low, off, or high. Volume, low, medium, or high. LCD brightness, manual or auto. Sound record, you can mute or unmute the microphone. Language selection, here there are many different languages you can select. Parking line, you can turn this on or off. GPS info, here you can see the signal strength of the GPS. About car DVR, this will show you the software version of the dash cam. Reset setup. If you want to reset this back to factory default. Now while it's recording, if you touch the screen, and then you press this icon right here next to the record button, this will switch the view to the rear camera. If you press a camera icon, it'll take a snapshot. The lock icon on the right will lock this video clip. And you may choose to lock the video clip if you see something happening on the road while you're driving. Let's go ahead and stop the recording. Next to the setup, there's a playback button. Here you can choose three categories, regular video recording, lock video recording, or snapshot pictures. If you look at the file name, you see each file name has A and a B. A is for the front camera, B is for the rear camera. Let's go back. Now right now we're looking at the rear view. Remember that red wire on the AV cable? If I apply 12 volt to assimilating putting the car in reverse, you'll see the view change to reverse parking mode. Because I enable the parking lines, that's why you see these parking lines. Now I'm going to remove the 12 volt. You'll see a switch to the regular rear view. So let me take a minute to show you the difference between turning on and turning off the driving mode. It was a bit confusing for me because the user guide was not very clear in explaining how that works. So let's first go into the setup. And right now the driving mode is enabled or on. So with this on, if you're looking at the image of the rear camera, like I am right now, after a minute, this image on LCD will turn off and then you'll be looking at the image of the mirror itself. And right now we're looking at the image of the mirror. You still have the time and date on the right side and it tells you the speed you're traveling on the left side here. Now if I touch the screen, it will go back to the rear view. So let's go back into setup. And now this time, I'm going to disable driving mode. Go back. Now with the driving mode disabled, when you're looking at the view of the rear camera, this will always remain on and the LCD will not turn off. So that's the difference between enabling and disabling the driving mode. Now the way I'm going to use this is to actually enable that driving mode. So after about a minute, I'll only be looking at the image on the mirror itself. Now let me show you the parking mode feature on this dash cam. Right now I'm in the settings menu. I'm going to scroll down to parking mode sensitivity that you see right here. Defaults off. You can set this for low or high. And it's pretty cool how it's designed to work. So once you set this to low or high, the parking mode feature is enabled. Now when you turn off the ignition to the vehicle, the dash cam will appear to have powered down, but in fact it's recording continuously and it's ready to sense any impact to the vehicle. That's why you need to set this sensitivity to low or high. Once it detects an impact, the current video clip will be locked and saved to your memory card. I'm going to set this for high right now. Exit the menu. Now disconnect the power to the dash cam simulating you turning off the ignition. And you see the unit turn off. Right now, the dash cam is still recording using the internal battery. I'm going to simulate the impact to the vehicle by tapping the mirror. 
At this time, the dash cam will lock that video clip in. Now I'll turn on the dash cam. Stop the recording. Go to playback. Go to a locked video. At this time, the dash cam will lock that video clip in. Now I'm going to go ahead. So this video clip you just watched is when it detected the impact and locked that video clip. And that's why you're able to hear what I was saying in the video. And with the way that this parking mode feature work, it does not require the dash cam to power up when it detects the impact and is able to lock that video clip quickly when an impact happens. And this is how the parking mode feature work on this AutoVox X1 dash cam. Now at any time while you're using this mirror, if you want to turn off the LCD, you simply have to press a power button at the bottom right here. You can press it again to turn it on. And if you want to completely power off the unit, press and hold the power button. And press and hold the power button to turn it on. So this is the unboxing and review of the AutoVox X1 rearview mirror car dash camera. As you can see, it's packed with a lot of great features. Now I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I will do a second video of me installing this unit into a vehicle. So once that video is available, I will link it to the end of this video. Now if you want to learn more about this unit, I will include the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comments section. And don't forget to click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified of any new video. Thank you.